psychologically irritating right. people sometimes. Absolutely. What you do. Uh, three or four Indian artists were there in the Rax Academy. Okay. One, one of them was uh, uh, Sonia Kurana, okay. Pranit Soi, and uh, Anand Joshi. Oh, wow. And I was a fourth. That's quite a gang. That's quite a gang. <laughs> yeah. Indian. <laughs> Hello, this is Wazwo X Wazwo, Evil O, coming to you again from Baroda. And um, I'm sitting with somebody at Gallery White, one of my favorite art galleries. And I'm sitting with an artist who's been on the scene for a long, long time, Mr. Sachin Karn. How are you, Sachin? I'm fine, thank you. Good? Yes. So I'm going to admit right away that I'm not as familiar with your work okay. as I am with other artists. So I'm going to be going at this a little bit blind sure. and you're going to have to help me. Right. But I know you're from Pune. Yes. And I know you studied at JJ. Right. Think, Later in, on. In yes. Mumbai. Yes. So tell us a little about your journey into art. How did you end up being an artist? I yeah. Guess. Yeah. Actually my schooling, up to schooling, up to graduation, I was in Pune. I did my undergraduate from Pune Art College. And then after that, I thought uh, I want to take it a little further. I want to, don't want to stop there. So that's how I uh, moved to JJ School of Art. But JJ School of Art, I was, uh, uh, I taken a study for art education, which is a more theory based course. And I don't, I'm not very happy with uh, Bombay itself because of the pace of life. I was looking for something a little more a calmer place. So Baroda was one of the places. Yeah. And that's how I landed up in Baroda in 1988. And you ended up going to the Faculty of Fine Art and also teaching there, correct? I, I, I taught for briefly there for two years. And uh, I was student earlier, and then I, I, was, I was teaching since 94 to 98. Okay. Yeah. So then after that, I thought I should pursue my career as a freelance artist. Right, full time which is artist. Full time artist, which is very difficult. <laughs> but we, we, I mean, uh, this is the way only we can function. It's very difficult, but you have to make that plunge and learn how to swim. I always absolutely. feel you just have absolutely. to do it, you know. So it's like any other artist. We, are, I also had a similar kind of a journey, which is like you have to, uh, be, be, as a state support. Hardly we have any state support in India. So whatever you do with, through with yourself and your gallery, that's how only you function. It's a difficult, but as you said, it's a, somebody had to take a plunge. We all take a plunge. Right. So I. I want to go back because when I first became familiar with your work to some degree yeah. was I think during your Mumbai days right. when you were showing with like Sachi I think right. but you were doing sort of these David Sal, if I'm saying that name right, uh, yeah. things where you were doing sort of like figures in a landscape but the figures were kind of like line drawings that right. hovered over this landscape. Right. Right. Do you want to talk about that yeah. period at all? Because sure. I, I like that period sure, a lot. Sure. It's very nice. Y you know, my, my works always had us, uh, layers of images. I, I was never happy with only one kind of a thing. So I feel that uh, as my mind is also clogged with so many ideas and images, my, ca my canvas also, paper, my image also, it's like they have a layers of things. So I always want to put one after another, one after another. So if I would draw a human figure, I would like the landscape should be peeping through the human figure. So this, I like this interplay between two things. I always like that because to me, that's the way we actually experience the world. Right, absolutely. Because there's sort of like the reality you're in and then there's also the reality in your mind. Absolutely. Which forms an image over the reality that right. you're actually in. Right. And so, I mean, that's why I often interpret those that, you know, the, the landscape behind it or the cityscape behind it is right. what you're actually experiencing. Yeah. But the figure is more yeah. of a emotion or mm. remembrance or something like that's, that that's influencing the way you view. Absolutely. Um, and that actually, that idea magnified much more when I was in Amsterdam. Okay. And uh, I was there for six months of residency. And my project was with the uh, Rijksmuseum. Oh, really? The yeah. Rijksmuseum. And wow. Rijksmuseum had one, one favorite artwork which everybody wanted to see is a night watch. And right. you know, it's very interesting. Uh, that, that was in 2003. And I had finished my art college in 1990 and uh, almost 13, 14 years. I was going through some kind of a confusion to, to stick to art form which I am actually in 
or I should um, try out various things which you know happening around so called installations, performance art, video art all those things. I was losing little uh, confidence in the painting itself. But when I went to Reich's museum and I saw this night watch, it was a really a reassurance of painting. I thought I am going to do this only. So you know, that painting had a magic. And that painting, uh, when I, at the same time I was reading about John Berger's book about what makes a work uh, masterpiece. So masterpiece has a several kind of a qualities. So one of the quality was uh, John Berger was talking about uh, uniqueness, why, why people want, because it is unique one only. So I, th I thought let us let's that try and challenge that myth or idea of singularity of the image or painting or artwork. So I multiplied same image of night watch, five different canvases okay. and superimposed my images. Again those layering came again. I put text also, night watch also and my images also. There are so many layers of things happening. So then after that I did five paintings of those, came back to India, I did another five paintings of Indian masterpiece and I chose uh, 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 Ajanta's uh, mural painting. There is one image called Padmapani that also had some kind of a political, I have my works always deal with politics, I mean somehow I like, I like to hide it and Padmapani was a lotus holding that Buddha had a, that time India was changing. Yeah. Indian politics was changing from 2000 onwards. So I thought it is very appropriate painting. So when you did this Rijksmuseum painting multiple times, right. did you actually do it in Amsterdam? I, I did it. Did, I did was you there show it in Amsterdam? Did I people did actually. See it? I had a solo show in the Rijksmuseum, Rijks Academy okay. for my uh, solo show. Now there. How did people react to that? Were well, they? I mean, you know, uh, uh, Vasco, you will be surprised that I was a bit, uh, I thought nobody is doing painting these days. But you will be surprised to know painting was in thing that time also. People were looking at artists differently. Yeah. They thought the painters, so called painters have a, at least they have some physical, physical quality to do, right. some skills they have to do it, they execute it. So they, we, they always very curious also about what I, we were doing. And when I took that uh, images of a night watch uh, five times and the, all the Dutch artists were around, they were actually they quite like the idea, the way I, my take on masterpiece or Dutch artist. So they, when they come to India, they also usually react to or so openly about whatever happening here, which we sometimes in the Indian miss out. So they actually looked at very curiously about it and it was a great experience for me. When you were in Amsterdam, was that the same time that like AGVN was there and AGVN uh, was uh, in Shibu Natesen, I think. Was Shibu was much earlier. Yeah. Did you meet them in Amsterdam or no? No. Shibu uh, wasn't there. Okay. Shibu, Shibu had finished and left to UK. But um, that time, same time, uh, three or four Indian artists were there in the Rax Academy. Okay. One, one of them was uh, uh, Sonia Khurana, okay. Pranit Soi and uh, Anand Joshi. Oh wow. And I was a fourth. That's quite a gang. That's quite a gang. <laughs> yeah. Indian actually even <laughs> dominated the scene that time. Right. So it, it was that's quite an interesting thing. So you had this wonderful uh, experience in Amsterdam, which is such a beautiful city. I love Amsterdam. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much art, not just the Rijksmuseum, but like the Van Gogh Museum and everything Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Yeah every palace you go into. I know. So you came back to India and then how was it adjusting into the Indian scene when you got back? What year was this? This was in 2004. Okay. I came back in 2004. So the Indian scene was just beginning to really boom. Right. Okay. Right. And then whatever I, uh, my project was undertaken in Amsterdam, I came in India and completed that. And those five paintings and five paintings I did in India, large size, there are six feet by four feet. I had a solo show with Sakshi. In Mumbai. That time solo gallery was in uh, Parel. So that was a time I showed and fortunately two of those works went to National Museum for a collection. Oh, good. So, so which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in a way things were actually happened in a way like a reassurance in the painting. I was losing hopes in the painting. I so should I continue, shouldn't I continue? But then ever since I never looked back. 
Well, I'm glad you did because, you know, I'm very much into painting. Absolutely. Hobby. I'm like into craft. Hobby. I'm into skill levels. Right. And um, which I don't personally have, but I like working with people who have them. But um, it's there's too much conceptual stuff with all the installation and video stuff. Not that I don't like that Same stuff. Sometimes yet. I really love it. But at a certain point, I went. I went to the Venice Biennale. I don't know what year it was. I don't know, I'm going to say 2014 or something. But huh. it was like every other thing was an installation or a video right. and it was like there was no painting no really i know and then when you finally came to a room full of paintings it was sai twombly right you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. i know i mean i, I kind of like sai twombly I too know, but i but mean it's not like that right. craft right you know that you want uh, exactly see. so uh, i know i mean uh, and our indian way of image making is totally different than european image making yeah. So we, we have a different idea of looking at things and the way we put also images like like uh, we put into a temple or something. It's kind of a central focused image and like a deity and then things are happening around. That is very different than European art. Uh, artists were actually using images, human figure especially. You often do human figures I notice in a landscape. Because yeah. when I, I look over your body of work, you you shift around more than many artists. Yeah. You know, sometimes I see a painting and I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, that's a Sachin Khan. Yeah. You can't tell right away right. because you approach things from different an right. uh, angles and a little stylistically different, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. But one thing I notice is sort of a common denominator. You do a lot of figures in landscapes. Yes. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, in a way, actually, uh, see, my work started changing from 2000 onwards. And uh, directly, more directly, uh, the political things started coming into my work. So I was trying to show some kind of a, a specific site through my work. So I use a lot of landscapes and cityscapes into my works. Uh, symbolism again comes into my work. So prior to that, I was using a lot of uh, uh, environmental issues through my work. After 2002, 2000, the whole India changed so much, uh, my works started changing. You started reacting, I know, to the Gujarat riots. Right. And you started reacting to the Bamiyan Buddhas. Right. You know, absolutely. that whole that's right. incident in Afghanistan. Yes. And so so uh, that's how the works. And uh, after that, I mean, I've been using uh, image of a books for a long time. It's not that I've been using, uh, like my last show was uh, completely on books. A story of books, the whole project was a story of books, 20 works, 21 works. So I used books earlier also, but again the books also comes to the, through the same route of a, some kind of a political commentary I am trying to make, some questioning I am trying to use. Uh, it's not, I am not talking only about India this time, because books have been banned all over the world from centuries. Right. And I thought let's tell the story of book itself rather than story, telling some other story through book. So I use book as a physical uh, image, but since I'm a painter, I don't want to use actual book. I want to paint a book. It's my ego in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I wanted to paint a book and then superimpose images and then tell a story such a way that it uh, doesn't become overtly political. And uh, it's, because it's like a poetry. You hide things. And you tell something, and some those who get, they get; they don't get, they don't get. Well, you had those things going on in India. I mean, you had the of well, going way back. You had the Salman Rushdie affair, and then you right. had the MF Hussein, Hussein the Hussein yeah, thing was absolutely. such a huge absolutely. Uh, matter. I mean, I was here during that time. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I would see Hussein in Kalaba the, walking out of Jahangir or something barefoot, you know, and it right. was like you know he used to hang out at pundals and stuff, and you know just be there. I know. And then when he got forced out of India, I mean, I, it really crushed. Me. Can you imagine? To me, he was like part of that whole ambiance of what made uh -huh. Mumbai ma Mumbai. Mumbai, I he was know. running into M. F. Hussein when you least expected it. Uh, absolutely, you know? he and actually, you know, he gave identity to Indian art himself, yeah. and he was thrown out of the India. You see, so it's a dichotomy. Always we deal with this kind of a things. We we choose what we want to see. This is what, and people want to interpret the way they want to interpret the works. So that's how the Hussein was actually targeted. Uh, that's what I but think. I don't see that the politics in your works are like 
it's not real heavy handed. No. It's more like you're working no, on an no. emotional right. level, right. you know, just like sort of psychologically irritating right. people sometimes. Absolutely. What you do. Absolutely. See, the um, works, any kind of a political event or any political uh, issues come to my mind, I, I, I try to filter through several times. I don't want to make it be a direct political messaging kind of a thing. I don't like that. I, I want to in a way wrap it in such a way that it looks beautiful, but there is inside some kind of a uh, ugly creature is there. If so, you appeal through people more through their hearts and subliminally, it sometimes is more powerful yeah. than if you appeal more logically or um, too directly, I guess yeah. I would say. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but you can still do it. Yeah, I know. So my, my always, always my editing is always constantly stops me from being very direct. I want to know, try and... So moving on, so then, you know, after those days, where you were doing sort of those David Sal, I keep worrying I'm pronouncing his name. Saleh, huh? Sale, yes. David Sale. he's an American. I yeah, have to yeah, pronounce yeah. his name right, but yeah, I don't. Yeah. Um, you kind of moved on, and then what direction did you go in after that? Actually, you know, it's very interesting you mentioned about David Sale. I mean, I, I was not actually fully in, uh, impressed with his art because I, I felt that uh, he's actually uh, appropriating a lot of other images of somebody else's created images. I was not very interested in that. But you felt it, maybe uh, people are looking at it like that. My, my intention wasn't like that at all. My intention is like putting images on top of each other in such a way that they create a mesh of the, uh, events and uh, as, as you said in the earlier, several things happen at the same time and through that you see the life. So David Sali wasn't in my mind at all. It's like a palimpsest of looking yeah, through a few steps. layers of paper right. almost sometimes. Currently you're having the show at Gallery White in Baroda. Um, what is the theme of this show and what are you addressing in this show? The, this show, see this show happened very uh, interesting event happened. I was, everybody was locked up in their own houses, so was I. So I was painting in my solitude in, and I finished few works and then uh, Vinit Nair of the Gallery White, he visited uh, my studio and then he, he liked some of the works and he said let's, let's do up some show. So then I pushed up some more works, completed few more works and uh, that's how the show happened and then show actually had a, as, as I, my works are always dealing with what's happening now. So I reflected on those ideas of uh, uh, COVID, more than COVID actually I'm talking about migrants, how people behavior changes, uh, those are things actually I'm more interested. So uh, even the beautiful looking lotus pond, I'm I'm trying some t trying to tell something different than actually lotus well, pond. I look at that lotus pond, which is a beautiful painting, yes. and you see the lotus pond, but then in the background you see the industrial landscape. Absolutely, homes you know, and industry and employment and, is right behind you. But it does make you think of these times when a lot of industry shut down. Actually, Absolutely, and those ponds kind of had a rebirth. That's right. And then the one you did of the street scene, just the empty street, right? Which could be any street late at night. Old city, you know, yes. Like in any old cities. Where old cities, they get very quiet. But in this particular time with COVID, it certainly sends right. that feeling of what happened in March and April when right. we were locked in our homes. I know. You know. Absolutely. Um, so the whole, all the six, seven works are actually dealing with uh, this kind of idea of uh, uh, solitude, uh, homelessness, unemployment of the people, plight of uh, migrant workers, and we as a citizens helplessly looking at them. We just can't help them at all. We were locked up in the house and they were running helter skelter for any kind of a transport or anything. And I felt these images are really scary, you know. In today's time, you, so social character has been exposed such a way that we are actually only thinking about ourselves. So I, I painted in such a way that, uh, that, that migrant workers are walking but through mesh of trees I am looking at them. There's a weird thing going on in the world now between governments wanting to do too much right. and exert too much control, control over the people 
um, in this crisis, which can kill the economy and everything, and governments not doing anything, right. and basically facilitating the spread of the right. virus. Absolutely. You know? So they're walking really kind of a line, right. but many are also taking advantage of the situation in one way or the other Absolutely. also. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, Let's talk about the painting you have in the next room, and I'll insert images of these, but the, the large canvas with the monkeys and the tree right. and the stylized mm. megaphone right. that has sort of a, I'm going to say it has a surrender quality in its yeah. grace. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's from Kukolopolis. <laughs> right, you know? I do. And uh, well, let's talk about that painting. What does that painting symbolize? Th that, that painting actually, I was, I was telling you about uh, the first thing when the lockdown happened and constantly from government uh, announcement was ha started happening, how you should be behaving, what you should be doing. And as a, and as a citizens, we were actually like dancing on their tune all the time. So that, that is my whole reaction to that. Like three monkeys, I mean, I, one could uh, link them to monkeys of Gandhi. Yes. No see evil, no see, no hear evil, those kind of things. Plus, uh, actually monkeys through, I'm talking about a human story. Uh, Somebody is telling you something and you are just blindly following them. So, and, and I don't want to place them in the tree. I made my own tree with a metal <laughs> structure and uh, I left the tree empty around. And next to it is like a tree with lemons. lemons. What, does the le what do the lemons symbolize? Lemons do they symbolize anything? I mean, I didn't think that way in a way, but I wanted to make a foliage there and leave the foliage untouched by all these things. Okay. And then you, I created my own foliage in a way with a metal structure where, where they look like a sculpture and then monkeys are placed on it. Are we missing any of your other works in this show that we should be talking about? You have some canvases out when you come in through the door also. Right. There is, there is another uh, uh, so-called tree of my microphones I created. Okay. Yeah, so speakers. Those speakers uh, and the speakers are so many speakers. And I just created one whole story, uh, the tree of a uh, uh, thing. And that also standing on the landscape, on farm. And then so, you also have the man with the darush. Darush, yes. Shooting at a... Uh, shooting at a man-made tree. A man-made tree. <laughs> yeah, or man-made so, disaster, you can say. Okay. So, so I, my whole idea was like, uh, we don't know whom we are actually, we should, who should we be uh, uh, blaming for these things. We don't know whom to blame for the COVID or whatever this situation. Uh, do we know whom we are fighting with? We don't know <laughs> whom we are fighting with. We are just like in that fighting mode all the time. Right. Because somebody is told, telling you to do that. So that's how that painting of Dhanush, and actually Dhanush comes like a, a mythical image also of uh, Arjuna aiming with the blindfolded. So that also one thing. And then one foot of that, that uh, guy who is an archer, as a house has been tied in his foot. So I was trying to tell various kind of levels of stories. So this is getting along up to 20 minutes probably. I tried to keep them between 20, 30 minutes. Okay. So let's finish it. Do you have anything else that you would like to say? Any comments or suggestions for the Indian art scene in general? or anything about society you want to comment on? I, I leave it open, totally open. To well, you. I, I want to end this. I know, I know. Uh, yeah, so. but I, I know my job is actually tell the story or tell the anyone through my art only. So I, I keep telling about uh, various issues uh, through my art. I, I'm not a very person to verbalize it. Of art, our art community, I don't know about much about it. I have a very different kind of experiences. Like my earlier uh, training was in very academic, British academy way I learned. And when I came to Baroda in the Faculty of Fine Arts, totally different uh, art practices was there. Right. So those, I'm actually got best from both the worlds. I got a skill level from that uh, uh, academic way of learning. Was that skill level imparted by JJ? JJ, all my art teachers were actually studied from JJ in okay. Pune because that, that's how they well, come. I remember, I've only been in JJ a few times, but I remember they still have the plaster casts and of, everything. And yeah. It was very much like an old academy. In the, and the, those plaster casts are from Greek or Roman, yeah. not Indians. You don't see Indian plaster casts. So uh, we studied in a similar way. So we, we, in a way, we have to, when we're students, 
we also had this kind of a drawing which actually looking very funny because whatever human figure we paint from india they look russian they look uh, romans or they look greek because of that kind of a training we had but i learned a lot from that and that, that time i didn't like it the academic way of learning but now i feel that uh, helped me to uh, my execute what i always tell young students you know if they have a good grounding and being Absolutely. able to draw right and basic painting techniques yeah god use it because so many people don't have it Absolutely. anymore and if you've got that talent right don't let anybody deviate Absolutely. You from that Absolutely. But, but keep it right. you can use it in new ways right use it in new ways yeah. astound people with right. what you do with it right. but don't abandon it I just know. to be fast but you know wasmo this is i think this kind of a wisdom comes after the age, some age or some kind of a maturity yeah. when we, i was student when i came to baroda i actually unlearned I, in a way, fought against my academic way of drawing, and I was ashamed of my skills. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. now you see, now I'm a different take on. Because I think age helps you to look at it differently. So now I feel, no, that's an asset. <laughs> I should not be ashamed of those things. Well, I could tell you stories, and I don't know, but I, I won't get. I've told this story before too often. I, it just revolves around. Sometimes I've met young. kids and they show you their portfolios and they have such incredible talent absolutely and then they're they're kind of almost ashamed of it right you know, it's like god you sat in a bus station or something and you drew this incredible sketch and you captured everybody's expression and gesture and everything's just like incredibly done right, right. and they're kind of ashamed of that they're, oh no I'll show you my work now this is right. this is my postgraduate work or something like right, that and then right, it suddenly right. becomes really generic and Abs- kind of boring i know I know um, that, that I think that's uh, <laughs> every student goes through this kind of a, yeah, absolutely but I think they also find their way out the other side that's right you know? when, when they realize it they they then they realize it like yeah. this is uh, it's nothing to be ashamed of anyway I've told that story too often <laughs> so Sachin thank you for joining me thank you and I think we'll just call it quits now okay sure Thank okay, you Mr. Sachin Karn thank you for giving us your time this is Waswell X Waswell coming to you from Gallery White here in Baroda and I have to say as I always do please please like and subscribe to this channel to keep it going thank you for joining us and see you next time bye 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 thank you Thank mm-hmm. you.